Uh, Mr. Hey, Mr. Chairman, thanks. I want to start with uh, with Tim Blodgett. Uh, Tim, you there? Yeah, I'm here, sir. Hey, l listen, first things first, before we move into where we're going from here, because there's plenty of people paying attention to, to the six, and, and I get that, and, and I appreciate that. But in the background of your shot, you have a Buffalo Bills helmet. And, and I'm just telling, I'm not giving you political advice. I'm just saying, quite frankly, the committee chairman is from the state of Ohio, and I don't think they play there. If you need something, try this book that the chairman wrote. It's not a page termer, but the chairman did write it. So as we go forward, just a thought. Now let's go to this, the, the topic at hand, huh? Um, hey, I, I want to I concentrate on, on, on where we're heading as a result of lessons learned from this. And, and the first thing I'd, I'd like to do is, I hope that as we're looking about security examinations and going forward, that we're taking a holistic look. And so I want your response to this, which is, listen, I know equipment's part of it. I know procedures are part of it. Chief, this applies to your folks too. I know training's part of it. I know communication's part of it. I know standard operating procedures in the future are part of it. I want your response to, as we decide what role barriers play, and in case anybody's missing it, it's, it's temporary prison fences with razor wire that we can mold all this stuff together and say, in a holistic way, okay, so barriers play a part of it, but we don't want the maximum barrier, you know, like we're not doing other stuff. It's like, let's take a look at what our posture is in terms of how we operate, how we train, how we talk with the National Guard, how we whatever. And so I, I would like, if it's possible, to have you put something on the record that as we talk about what the holistic way to go is that we evaluate all these tools at our disposal in a lessons learned sense uh, and don't just go back to, we want to do the maximum of everything. And the first thing is, it's kind of like working in, working in, a, in a minimum security prison right now. And I'm not trying to be judgmental on anybody. I'm just saying, quite frankly, fences and razor wire are, are and by the way, the architect of the Capitol should be involved. But I mean, in terms of placements and, and effectiveness, as opposed to, to stark visual sadness. So holistic approach, what do you think, Mr. Sergeant at Arms? Well, I, I agree there has to be a holistic approach, uh, sir. Um, in the general honore study, as well as studies that uh, the Security Services Bureau is doing um, and any that the architect may, may do at some point um, will take into account uh, the security uh, hardening that has to come around the campus. Uh, look to a future uh, state, and by future state I don't mean looking at necessarily barriers, but what new technology can we implement um, to keep the openness of the capital. Um, the chief has a plan for uh, for attempting to draw down the guard, the, the wire, and the fencing. It won't be uh, as fast as some people want, and it will be longer than other people want. Uh, but we'll be working with the, the committee and leadership on that, um, as well as any structural uh, items that have to be done, uh, especially the big ticket structural items. Your committee's going to be uh, fully engaged in your staff. So. You know, we're well, going to be looking to you too. And I appreciate that. So expect that to be a continuing um, uh, line of questioning in terms of transitioning away from the penal institution look for the nation's capital campus. And, and I like, I'm not, I'm not putting that at anybody's doorstep. I'm just saying, as we get farther away, we, we should be able to transition to something that once again is is non-penal. Um, Chief, uh, a couple of things for you. First of all, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't expect you to have the answer right off the top, so you can just re return to to us and, and the other members of the committee. Um, but but I was listening to your testimony, and, and, and you said tens of thousands, and I'm looking at the documents available to me, and I know that there were uh, approximately 30,000 at the rally, and that DOJ has estimated approximately 800 people entered the building. I I just like to know what what the what the source for the data of, uh, unless I misunderstood you, say uh, the, the statement that there were tens of thousands of people, and, and obviously I'm talking about the Capitol, and 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 so maybe I'm wrong, but but I was unaware of the fact 
when you say tens of thousands of people, that means 20,000 or more to me that were basically outside the capital, north, south, east, or west. And, and so I'd just like you to get back with us and give us the authority, the authority for that statement. Along those same lines, when you said you had all of your surveillance people deployed, I, I want to know what that number was. And, and so that's fine for online. For purposes of my limited time today, um, there are some pedestrian issues that are current. And I'll give you an example of the one at, uh, at I think it's C Street and, and behind Cannon, um, right there by the, uh, the, the Madison building, where the fencing has been deployed in a way that for pedestri pedestrian people that are, that are entering that after being screened, um, they basically put the fence all over the sidewalk. So you either have to traipse through a flower bed or kind of see how you can shimmy through on that. So I would appreciate it if there is someone our office could contact for purposes of fencing placement and just walk the perimeter so that if it's something where it can be relocated, so sidewalks are actually conducive to pedestrian traffic for those who are cleared to enter the campus, that that can actually take place. Sir, I, I believe uh, we have opened up some pedestrian accesses as of this morning uh, based on some feedback we heard yesterday. So if it hasn't been open, please let us know and we'll look into that. Well, don't misunderstand me. It's open. You just have to be able to walk through a flower bed to use the access point. And by the way, that's the metro access, which has always been open. It is unacceptable that you have people queuing up to get through a gate for pedestrian access that the fence has rendered pedestrian access difficult to be generous we'll, we'll take a look at that sir thank you okay and then finally i would like to know that's not you that's the chief or, or and you but finally i would i would like to um to, to get a briefing a little later on what the coordination is between both of your offices and the, the aoc in terms of fence design uh, evaluating the proper places for whatever those barriers are as we go forward. And, and listen, I'm not suggesting an answer. I just want to know that, that issue is being worked as opposed to, yeah, yeah, that's we'll get that later on. And the final one that I want offline is this. Who has operational control over the National Guard troops on the Capitol campus right now? For example, if there's an incident at that area where I told you that the, the gate where the sidewalk is, uh, it's like, so something happens there and we've got an incident and stuff's going, who's in charge? Um, how do they handle that? At least in the first 30 minutes, um, I'm hoping that the communication issues that we've been hearing about are not communications issues in terms of using those resources in quite frankly, a coordinated chain of command if something pops up. And I'll take all those offline later on. I'm mindful of your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. I, I'd like to just kind of follow up and, and uh, ask Chief Pittman if she could answer the question about the tens of thousands of uh, insurrectionists, um, what that exact number was of people on the Capitol complex that were pushing through to get to the Capitol. If you could get us that, not, do you have that number handy, Chief? Yes, I do. So we base that number off the numbers that were screened down at the ellipse from the Secret Service. We know that they screened over 15,000. I believe that number was closer to 20,000. And there were 15,000 approximately that were outside of the ellipse that were unscreened. We know that those groups left there from our camera footage and came to Capitol Hill. So that's where those numbers are primarily based off of we know what they were able to screen down at uh, the ellipse. And then as it relates, uh, a couple of follow-up, if I may, sir. Uh, first and foremost, there was a question previously as it relates to evacuation uh, routes. So I am uh, willing to provide that. I know that some of that information is sensitive, if not classified, if you will. So I'd like to provide a follow-up answer as it relates to why we evacuated uh, some of the chambers in the manner that we did. Uh, as it relates to infrastructure, uh, we are actively working, as I said, with the uh, task force. And I know that I speak for everyone here in the leadership when it comes to the fencing that's surrounding the campus, as well as the National Guard. Uh, we have no intention of keeping the National Guard soldiers 
uh, or that fencing any longer than what is actually needed. Uh, we're actively working with a scaled down approach so that we can make sure that we address three primary variables. One is the known threat to the environment. Two is the infrastructure vulnerabilities. And then that third variable, variable being the limitations that U, U.S. Capitol Police know, knows that it has as it relates to human capital and technology resources. So we are actively addressing those. Uh, if I may just add one more point. With that said, we know that the insurrectionists that attacked the Capitol weren't only interested in, tech, in attacking members of Congress and officers. They wanted to send a symbolic message to the nation as of who was in charge of that legislative process. We know that members of the militia groups that were present on January 6th have stated their desires that they want to blow up the Capitol and kill as many members as possible uh, with a direct nexus to the State of the Union, which we know that date has not been identified. So based on that information, we think that it's prudent that Capitol Police maintain its enhanced and robust security posture until we address those vulnerabilities going forward. Uh, sir, as it relates to the fencing and the problems with the pedestrian access, I will reach out to your office today and make sure that I will lean forward by taking action, working with the House Sergeant at Arms to ensure that pedestrian and staff that need to traverse the grounds are able to do so in a safe and efficient manner. And one more side note for the chairman, you said that you were from the great state of Ohio and we gave Mr. Blodgett a hard time about his bills. I can tell you that my husband is from the great state of Alabama and we are avid Roll Tide, Crimson Tide national champions and fans. So I just had to put that plug in there for my Roll Tide fans on the call. Thank you, sir. Thanks, thanks, Steve. That that will that will get you nowhere with me. I'll tell you right out of the gate. Uh, uh, as a, an Ohio State Buckeye, uh, if you could, Chief. Um, again, I'm sorry, Mr. Case is next. Just let me slide this in because I think what Mr. Amade's uh, questions were were important. What what was the number outside the Capitol? We know that it was 15,000, maybe plus, at the ellipse. How many made their way down to the Capitol with the bike fencing uh, right after that? Or we don't have an exact number. Like we didn't uh, implement screening that day, like service. But based on the estimates that we saw from our TV camera, we could tell approximately who was coming uh, from the ellipse to the Capitol ground. So we know that there were. Uh, excess of 10,000 uh, demonstrators that traversed the campus on January 6th. So you, you think it was 10,000 that came to the Capitol, left the ellipse, walked down to the Capitol, and then forced their way in? I think that we were well in excess of 10,000 that traversed the grounds. But as far as the numbers that actually came into the building, we estimate that that was approximately 800 demonstrators. Okay, well, that, that that brings about a lot of questions around use of force and, and, and other things. 